Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Jacob Volkman. Jacob, how are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you. I'm doing good. Jacob, you got a fight coming up April 26th at DFC Spring Brawl 2014. How's Trayman going for the fight? Yeah, it's going all right. Nothing I unexpected. Now, are you still training out of the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy? Yeah, in short, it's called the Academy. It's right out of Brooklyn oh. Center, Minnesota. Oh, okay, okay. And who's training there nowadays? Because some of the guys that we associate that camp with either haven't been very active or are retired. So who who do you train with? Well, you got uh, Mike Richmond and Sean Richmond, the two brothers. Right. Uh, Nick Compton, Zach Juice lives there right now. Uh, Melvin Cruz, a guy named um, Clarence Jordan, and there's there's a few other guys, but they're they're, they're smaller. Like Andre Kiwi, he's a smaller guy. Mm-hmm. Are the coaches still the same guys, or are there different coaches there now? Uh, same coaches. Greg Nelson is the main coach. You got Nat McIntyre, he helps out, and uh, uh, Andy Gron helps out every once in a while. Oh, same coaches. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Now coming up on April twenty sixth, you're going to be fighting Danny White. How much do you know about him? Well, I heard he's a, he's a wrestler. Uh, he's got a decent record, a lot of submissions. Not, n- nothing with. Uh, he's got a couple TKOs, but I'm assuming he just had some. Um, someone that wasn't very good and just kind of took him down and punched him inside the head and quit. I don't know. He really hasn't been he hasn't been uh, tested too hard. He, he lost to a four and three guy. I think I saw. Mm, I see. Okay. Okay. This fight is going to be fought at the catch weight of 165 pounds. So I'm just curious, why the catch weight? Is it something where you're possibly going back up to welterweight? You're thinking about making a move in weight class, or is it something where he's a welterweight who can't make 155? So you guys are meeting at a catch weight. I'm just curious, why are you fighting at 165? Well, I was walking around at 185. <laughs> <laughs> I just took the fight about two weeks ago, so I was like, well, I can't make 155, but. Yeah, do 165, because he was talking about doing 160, and I, I figure if he's doing 160, he can give up another five. Oh, okay, I see, I see. How did you get the offer to fight on this card? Because I read somewhere that you don't have a manager, so how did you get the offer to fight on April 26th? No, i managed by Monty Cox, but oh, okay. he didn't get the fight. I uh, sent out a Facebook, Facebook request to the, to the guys that, that promote fights, like Brock Larson, he promotes fights in like the Brainerd area, and Jeremy Bjornberg, he promotes fights in the cities, and I asked him if they're they're looking for a 55 or 170 pounder. Oh, okay, okay. I contacted Chris Nelson and asked him too. Oh, I see, I see. Now, the word on the street is that World Series of Fighting is planning on having you back September, October-ish, so that's a good five, six months from now. Um, is the plan to continue... To, to pick up wins here on the regional circuit, maybe get five or six fights in? Is, is that the plan, or are you looking maybe two or three? You know what What's a good amount of fights from now until uh, when World Series of Fighting can get you back in the rotation? You know, if you if you had your pick, you know, w- would it be five or six? It would be five or six, but the odds are it's probably not going to be because they're probably not going to let me fight two months away from the, mm-hmm. the, the next one they booked me on. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I can get four in. That's that's the goal, get four fights in. Mm-hmm. That was going to be my next question. Is there something in the contract where, where they have to um, approve who you fight? Like you have to go to them with the offer? Or is it something where the only thing that you have to do is just make sure it's not within you know 30 or 60 days of when they have you to fight? You know, well, I, I have to go to them and ask them to fight certain dates and certain people and certain events. Oh. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can't just fight whoever, whenever. Oh, okay. I still have a contract with them. Oh, I see, I see. Jacob, changing gears a little bit, I want to talk about your other business. Besides being a fighter, you also are a doctor, you're a chiropractor. How's business going? Because usually when when people ask you about your business, uh, you don't, you don't really say much about it. So, um, how's it going? You know, is it is is it going good? Is it everything going going fine? And also, um, what's a typical day for you? You know, what are typical work hours for you? Well, I, I do appointment hours, appointment only, so mm-hmm. I don't have set hours. So it's to be what I, I I put into it. I don't put too much time into it. So it, I pay for itself, and I get a little bit on the side. That's about it. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing appointment only because my focus is fighting right now. Mm-hmm. Is that the way it's always been, or is it just that, you know, because you've been fighting in some big shows uh, lately, you know, UFC, World Series of Fighting, is it something where uh, just your fighting career has taken off, so you've had to put the chiropractic work on the back, on the back burner, or is it something where uh, you're trying to make uh, the fighting your number one thing, and, and it, you know, 
the chiropractor work falls number two? You know, why why are you appointment only? Well, like you said, I'm trying to focus on the fighting and, mm-hmm. and putting a chiropractic on the back burner. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see. Now, what's your clientele, you know, what kind of people are you working with? Are you working mostly with, with athletes? Are you working with um, the average Joe, you know, maybe uh, el- the elderly who, you know, may have uh, lifelong back problems? You know, give us an idea of what kind of people you work with. Well, I, I work with pretty much everybody, but I, I don't see too many elderly patients. It is sports-related. I'm better with sports-related injuries, so I get more middle-aged to younger kids. I get a lot of people from the academy that come in and, and get adjusted. Mm-hmm. So it's more, more people that work out and actually take their, their body. Mm-hmm. Serious. Mm-hmm. Now I'm always curious because um, you know you, you go I go to a doctor all the time and I always wonder you know who's his doctor. So um, do you get adjustments regularly? And if so, who who does them for you? Yeah, I get adjusted by John McKay. He's a, he's in my office. He, he rents space at my office. He has set hours every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's who I see. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Now, Jacob, I think a thing that's always um, associated with you whenever uh, we bring your name up is, you know, obviously, um, you know, Volkman for president and all that stuff. Um, you know, your political thoughts and all that. Um, is that something that maybe down the line, do you ever have any plans of running for office, whether it's, you know, trying to be mayor or, or Congress or even pre- president? I don't know. Is Is professional politics something you're interested in? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm right now. I'm gonna say no. But I, I said the same thing about fighting. I said I would never get into fighting, but I kind of fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Started fighting. So who knows what the what the future holds for political Volkman here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm curious about that because you know a lot of doctors, whether it be mixed martial arts or kickboxing or boxing or football or hockey, you know, any any high impact sport. Uh, where, you know, there's a, a high chance of injury. A lot of doctors, you know, aren't really fans of that. You know, try to stay away from that. All these doctors, they're, they're not really a big fan of those kind of sports. Um, you being a doctor, why why did you decide to take up fighting? Well, they might not be fans of it because they got picked on by those athletes. Right. <laughs> That's probably why they don't like them so well. <laughs> right. Yeah, I've been, I've been wrestling since I was four years old, so right. it's really hard for me to stop competing and stop training for, for something. I've been doing it for tw- almost... 29 years now and can't stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, with that being said, you, you had the wrestling background, so you kind of had an avenue into the sport, but um, when did you start discovering the sport? You know, when was the first time you were exposed to it? First time was, I think it was 2006 when Sean Shirk, I think it was 2006, Sean Shirk came to the wrestling room and he, he showed some submission moves and we were working on those. And then he asked me to help him train for a fight he was coming up and he was fighting Hermes Franca. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, when that was. So it's six months before that fight. Right. Uh, UFC 73. Franca. Yep, 2007. I'm sure the fight was. Yep. So UFC 73. He fought him in Sacramento. What year? Uh, 2007. He fought uh, Hermes Franca, uh, UFC 73. Um, it was the co main event. Nate Marquardt and Anderson Silva was the main event yeah. of that card. Yep. Six months before that, that's mm-hmm. when he got me hooked. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, when you got into the sport, what were your expectations? You know, what did you think you were going to do? You know, ha- ha- have you exceeded your expectations? You know, you had a, a really good run in the UFC, and you made it there. You know, you were undefeated entering the octagon. So, uh, have you exceeded expectations, or has your career kind of gone the way you had thought it would be? Well, at first, I I wasn't even planning on fighting too much because I was going to I was in school at the time to be a chiropractor, and then after school, I was planning on being a chiropractor, and not a fighter. Mm-hmm. But then I signed with UFC and. And I decided that fighting is going to be my primary income, and I'm going to put chiropractic to the side for now until I'm, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I see, I see. Now, um, I, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about your UFC run. Obviously, it was it was a while ago, and, and you've moved on since then, but a couple questions here. Um, when you made that drop to lightweight, that's when things really started to pick up for you. You you went on a nice little win streak. Uh, you lost the fight to Paul Sass, but then you rebounded quickly and submitted Shane Roller. Then you had a loss to uh, Bobby Green. Um, how much of a factor did the Bobby Green fight have in, in, in you being cut, or was that just something where it was just they were looking for an excuse uh, to get rid of you? Because it seems like, you know, with some of the things that you said, and, and a lot of people have deemed you as a boring fighter, whatever that means, I 
I don't really know what a boring fighter is. I, I think that a lot of people are excited, you know. But but again, I'm not the right guy to ask because I, I enjoy watching guys like John Fitch and Jake Shields and Ben Askren fight, and everyone says they're boring. So I don't know what that means. I I get enjoyment out of it. I guess I'm just a weirdo. But um, was that Bobby Green fight just basically an excuse for them to get rid of you? Yes, that was that was their their reason. They were looking for a loss because as soon as you get a loss, they can cut you any time. Mm-hmm. That was the reason for them to um, to get rid of me. I, it, it had a lot of things to do with political views. Right. They didn't like. They actually did a, a summit meeting the following summer when when I made the Obama comment. Right. And, and they told fighters not to get political because it, it really hurts your career. And they were just pretty much aiming it right at me because mm-hmm. after that Obama comment, they never gave me a fight for seven months. Mm-hmm. They didn't. They didn't like the road I was going. But that was my. That was me. Mm-hmm. So they, they they were just trying to get rid of me mm-hmm. after that, and then after a loss, they just got rid of me. Mm-hmm. This might be a foolish question, but you don't strike me as the guy, you know, the kind of guy who uh, you know goes back and you know uh, you know takes back his words. But um, now that the thing, you know, things have happened, and, and you're outside the organization, do you do you do you, you look back on that and say, you know, I wish I I didn't say anything about that. I should have just kept my mouth closed. Do you do you do you, uh, you know wish that that didn't happen? No. No, there's not too much, too many things I, I have regrets on. Right. Mm. Okay. I said it. I, I was thinking about it for a long time. If I said it, mm-hmm. the best line that you had was the uh, glassectomy one. I thought that was very clever. I don't know why more people. I mean, uh, you know, there were a lot of people out there who didn't, you know, didn't like it because you know you you made a comment about the president. But you got to respect the, the cleverness. I thought Joe Rogan he. Uh, he, he screwed you there because he didn't ask you why. He, when, when you said the glassectomy, you should have come back immediately. Why? That kind of ruined the joke a little. But I thought you had to get some points for, for being clever. I thought that was pretty good. I think Joe Rogan knew where it was going. Right. <laughs> and he, he didn't want to get political because they, they warned him. They oh. warned him not to get political. Oh. But he was he was kind of leaving me hanging there. Yeah. He told him that look at his face. He was like, are you really going to go there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But it was still clever. Right? Yeah, so he knows all these jokes, are right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that, that, I mean, it was it was very clever. I must say. Um, regardless, I mean, who, who, whatever whatever it was about, it was it was still uh, pretty well thought out of. Anyways, um, is that something that you know you're a doctor? Is that something that um you know if anyone's looking for one of those, if anyone's got their head up their ass, uh, could you help them out with that surgery? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> That's, great. That's great. The fight between you and Bobby Green or the fight between you and Paul Sass, what's the one that you look at as the um, the, the performance uh, that, that wasn't, I, I don't know, would keep you up at night if that if they do? I don't know if you, you're one of those kind of guys who every loss is the end of the world, but um, uh, what, what's the one of those two that you're like, oh, man, I wish I had that one back? Uh, uh, Sass or um, Green? It's hard to say because that was... When I was tra- training for Bobby or Paul Sass, I was training not to get submitted with or training his defense for the, his his best technique. Mm-hmm. You can't train for trying to defend somebody's best technique. You got to train your offense and and go from there. You can't train to defend someone's best technique. They've been working on their whole life, and especially in eight weeks. And then for Bobby Green, it's I was just disappointed. I only had four weeks to train for, it and I got out of shape, or I think I had a. I was on uh, antibiotics at the time too, so I was kind of out of shape when I got in there. And then in the second round, it really hit me when I went for a double leg, and I kind of fell down because I had no energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, it really, both bothered me. <laughs> right, right. Now, going forward, this card that you're fighting on, uh, Dakota FC. This fight is not very high up on the card. It's not the main event, and it's not the co-main event on this card. And you're a guy who's fought in big shows, the UFC World Series of Fighting. I would think that you'd be higher up on the bill here. Uh, you're, you're not in the main event or co-main event. So I'm just curious, does it bother you that you're not higher up on the card? Is that something that you care about where you're on a card, or, or do you not care at all? It doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. Even if it's on the regional circuit, a, a, a mid-level show like this? No, yeah, it does, it's never bothered me where I was at on the card. Mm-hmm. Some things that bother people, and that was one thing that does not. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, there's that whole uh, boring fighter, or you know, not not fun to watch, or whatever people that throw around. Boring fighter comes from the people that just right. keep people stand and bang and, right. and beat their brains in. I'm not one of those fighters that likes to do that. That's this. The, those are the people that that kind of rule the underground and the forums. The ones that like the stand and bang kind of fighters and wrestlers obviously aren't because 
they're they're going to stick with wrestling as their mm-hmm. strength mm-hmm. to win the fights. Mm-hmm. That's why we're labeled boring. Is because that's not what they want to watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you know you don't strike me as the kind of guy who cares what people think. But uh, is this something that you know w- will? force you to make a style change or, or do you not even care because you know if you were you know knocking guys out left and right you know you could make the case that you still could possibly be in the UFC or you'd be uh, you know higher up on this card um, is, is there something that you ever thought about like maybe maybe I'll just change my style for maybe a couple, a couple fights here and there and then get some people on my side and then go back to the old way is that something you've ever thought about yeah a couple times I, I tried it with this, my, my last fight and I tried it with Bobby Green they didn't end up so well I ended up losing them because I was my, it changes my stance. Mm-hmm. My chance, my stance goes from more of a wrestling stance to a, a standing, more of a, like a Muay Thai stance. Mm-hmm. And the guy he he double, or took me down I, twice, ended up losing the fight with a decision. I shouldn't have lost the fight because I, I did a lot more aggress or a lot more uh, punches on him, and I took him down just as many times. I had his back the first round. Kind of got screwed in that last fight I had with World Series of Fighting, but. Now they're punishing me. They haven't had me fight for six six months now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, a couple more questions I have for you, Jacob, before I let you go. Um, they're about your nickname. Uh, you were Christmas for a very long time. Now you're Feel Good. Um, why the change, and why did you decide to stick with Feel Good? Well, I'm going back to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm getting rid of Dr. Feel Good. I got, rid, I got rid of Christmas at first because I didn't want to think about the UFC and getting fired. Mm-hmm. You know what? I I figured Doctor Feelgood. I, I might as well stick with a, a cool nickname like Christmas. Doctor Feelgood was just something I kind of randomly made up with a bunch of teammates. Oh. I'll promote my chiropractic business. Oh, I see. I see. I'm going to bring back Christmas. Mm-hmm. Now you got the nickname Christmas because of references to um, Lloyd Christmas from <laughs> Dumb and Dumber, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now yep. uh, Brock Lesnar was making fun of my haircut with uh, Nick Thompson. Mm-hmm. So it looks like Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber. I had a bowl haircut. Right. It looks like I had a helmet on my head. Right, right. So they were just making fun of me. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's funny that you bring that up because I don't really think, you know, even I tried to find a picture of you from that time and I was, un, you know, unable to, but I don't really see see the resemblance there. Maybe it's just the hair thing, but I don't really see one. You know, do you do you think you look like him from that movie? No, no. Right. You got that ace guy, Frank. Frank yeah. looks yeah. Looks really close to him. Yeah, yeah. Rich Franklin, when he fought Vanderlei Silva at UFC 147, had that haircut, and and you know him and Jim Carrey look a lot alike. But if if uh, you looked like Jim Carrey, then you would look like Rich Franklin in in a weird way. So I don't see that nickname. I was surprised when I read that online that that's how you got that nickname is from that movie. I, I'm like, I can't see this at all. Yeah, it was just from the haircut. I think. Mm, I see. Here's a question for you, since we're on the uh, look alike deal. If someone was going to make a movie about your life, who would you want to play you? Who would I want to play me? Yeah. Who do you think looks like you, or who do you think would be a good Jacob Volkman in a movie? I have no idea. I never thought about that one. That's the first time someone's ever asked me that one. Really? <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Clint Eastwood would be awesome, but obviously I'm not at all like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of westerns lately, and I like his, his style. Mm. Anyways, Jacob, uh, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Well, I have no sponsors right now. I haven't worked on them because I only had two weeks to work on it. Mm. Uh, you, can, you can check me out on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, I, I could probably, and you message me, I'll follow you back. It's just at Jacob Volkman. I have two N's behind my name. Or you can follow, yeah, follow my fan page on Facebook. Mm. Jacob, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck. April 26th, that DFC Spring Brawl 2014 against Danny White. Hardware, North Dakota. I'm going to have a bunch of fans fans and family there, so it's going to be kind of exciting.